Hey everyone, this is Raja from Charger Games and welcome back to this video. So in this video, we're going to learn about c -sharp scripting in Unity in just 15 minutes. Now this is part 2 of my c -sharp in 15 minutes series. So if you haven't checked the first part yet, make sure to check that out. And you can check out all my other courses and videos from the links in the descriptions below. So with that being said, we have a lot to cover and let's get started. So in this video, we're going to learn about a lot of useful c -sharp scripting functionalities that we can use while building games in Unity. Now we have to cover a lot of things within this short time, so we're gonna go really fast, so let's get started. So first of all, we're gonna learn how we can spawn a game object in Unity. So in order to spawn a game object, first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new 3D object, a sphere. I'm gonna rename this one to ball. Now I'm gonna add a color to it. So inside my materials, I have these colors. You, if you want to create a material, you can go to right click, create and new material from here, this way. And I have this material here. I'm gonna slightly drag and drop it right here. So now as you can see, our ball has this color. Now I'm gonna go and add a rigid body to it. So I'm gonna go to add component, physics, and I'm gonna add a rigid body component to it. Now, if you click on play, and if I drag my ball up, as you can see, it falls down because now it has the rigid body attached to it. So now what we're going to do is, whenever our game starts, we want to simply spawn this ball. We don't want it to be here at the beginning, but whenever we start the game, we have to spawn the ball. So in order to do that, we also need a spawn point where we actually want to spawn our ball. So here I'm going to click on create an empty game object and I'm going to name this one spawn point. And from the icons, first of all, let's go ahead and reset its position. Now from the icons, I'm going to select an icon for it like this so that we can see where it is. And I'm going to drag and move it upwards somewhere like this. So this is the point from where our ball will spawn. So this is our spawn point. Now here I'm going to go ahead and create an empty game object and I'm going to name this one game manager. And this is what we're going to do all our experiments on in this video. Here, here inside my scripts folder, I'm going to right click and create a new c -sharp script and I'm going to name this one game controller. All right. So game controller. So I'm going to select my game manager and drag and drop my game controller over it. Now I'm going to double click to open it in Visual Studio. All right. So now we have to spawn an object. In order to spawn an object, first of all, we need to create a public game object, not game controller public game object ball so this ball object will store the ball reference to our ball game object next we need a public transform spawn point so this is the position where we are going to spawn our object all right so now here we're going to create a new function we're going to call it void spawn ball and inside the spawn ball function, we're going to spawn our ball. And for that, we're going to write instantiate. And what do we want to instantiate? We want to instantiate the ball game object. And at which position? We want to instantiate at spawn point dot position. And which rotation we want? We want quaternion dot identity. All right, so we want to spawn our ball at this position with this rotation. That means with zero rotation. So now let's go ahead and save this script. Go back to Unity. Here in Unity, before we can use it, we need to save our ball as a prefab so that we can reuse it. So inside my assets folder, I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder and I'm going to call this one prefab. Now inside the prefabs folder, I'm going to drag and drop my ball right here. So now we can reuse this ball anytime that we want. So I'm going to go ahead and deactivate this ball from the scene. Then I'm going to select my game manager and as you can see, it has a slot for ball. I'm going to drag and drop my ball from the prefab folder here. And for the spawn point, I'm going to drag and drop the spawn point right here. So we have the ball and the spawn point. And now we need to open up game controller. And inside the start, we need to say spawn ball. So we are calling this function in the start. Now let's go back. And now if I click on play, when the game starts, our ball spawns. And anytime when I restart the game, the ball keeps spawning. Just like this. So now let's learn how we can spawn the ball when we press a button on our keyboard. So let's open up our script. And here inside the update, I'm going to say if input dot get key down key code dot space so that means whenever we press the space button we simply want to call the spawn ball function all right now i'm going to comment this one out and now whenever i press the space button the ball will be spawned so let's go back to unity 
and every time I press the space button, as you can see, a new ball spawns and it keeps spawning like this. So what we can do is I can go to my plane and if you don't have this plane, you can simply go to create 3D object plane and create a new plane. And I'm going to select my plane and from the X rotation, I'm going to give it a rotation of let's say 10 or minus 10. All right, just like this. So now you will see whenever I click on play, I press base button and a new ball spawns and it falls down. All right. So now we're going to learn how we can click our mouse on the, at a point and spawn the ball at that position on our screen. So let's see how we can do that. So open up our script. And here inside the update function, we need to say if input dot get mouse button down zero, that means if we are pressing the left mouse button, then first of all, we need to get the mouse position. So here we're going to say vector vector three mouse pose equals input dot mouse position. All right. Next, we need to do what we need to do is we need to change the Z position of our mouse. So we need to say mouse mouse pose dot Z equals 5F. All right. Or let's say 10F. Then we need to say vector three spawn position. So this is the position where you're going to actually spawn equals camera dot main dot screen to world point. And here we're going to write mouse pose. So here we are converting our mouse position, which is in screen coordinates to this one that is world coordinate. So in order to use any position, we need to convert it to world coordinates. Otherwise we cannot spawn the objects at the correct position. So now that we have got the position, we need to spawn our ball at this position. So to do that, I'm going to simply copy this spawn ball code, paste it here. And instead of this spawn point at position, here we're going to say spawn pose. All right. So this is the spawn position that we have calculated from our calculations. So let's go back to unity. So now you will see whenever I click my mouse, the ball gets spawned at that point. So this is how we have learned how to spawn a ball at any point where we click our mouse. All right. So now we're going to learn how to change the color of the balls when they collide with this plane. So for that, here we're going to create another new script. We're going to call this one ball controller. Then I'm going to go to my prefabs folder, select my ball, go to add component scripts and add the ball controller script to it. All right. Now I'm going to double click on it. Now here, what we need to do is we need to check when our ball is colliding with the plane. For that, we're going to call the void on collision enter function. So this function gets called automatically whenever our ball collides with any other object. So whenever our ball collides with any other object, we need to simply change the color of the ball. In order to change the color of the ball, we're going to say get component renderer. And this will give us access to the renderer component of our ball dot material dot color equals color dot red. So whenever our ball collides with the plane or any other game object, we're going to simply go and change its color to color dot red. You can simply go ahead and change it to color dot green or color dot blue. I'm going to simply go ahead and make it red. So now let's save this and go back to unity. Now you will see I can spawn my balls at any point and whenever they fall down, they actually become red. So now you can see I can spawn my balls at any position and whenever they fall down, they automatically change the color and they become red. So our code is working. Okay, so now we're going to learn how to call this spawn ball functions repeatedly again and again so that we don't have to do anything and this function will get called again and again and the balls will get spawned again and again. To do that, we're going to use something called invoke repeating. All right. So here inside the start function, we're going to write invoke repeating which helps us to call any function repeatedly. So first of all, within a string, we need to, we need to write the name of the function exactly as it is. So I'm going to go ahead and select my spawn ball and copy this. And here I'm going to paste spawn ball. All right. So now after that, for the second parameter, we need to write after how many seconds we want to start calling. So let's say after one second, we want to start calling. And then we need to mention after how many seconds we want to repeatedly call it. So let's say here I pass 2f. So that means it will call this function every two seconds. So after every two seconds, this invoke repeating function will get called and the balls will be instantiated. So this is the code we need to write to repeatedly call this function again and again. So let's save this and go back to unity. And here if I click on play, now you will see I'm not doing anything. 
I'm not clicking on my mouse or pressing my space button, but all the balls are falling again and again, one by one, one after one, and they are just going down. All right, so our code is working. But as you can see, all of them are actually spawning at the same position. So they are not changing their position, they are all falling at the spawn point. So now we're gonna learn how we can actually randomize the position and spawn them at any point that we want to. So if you select our spawn point, as you can see this is positioned here. So we need to find a random point over this plane. So what you can do is we can get a random position of X between this, which is about 2.87, so let's say 2.60, so let's say minus three. So we need to spawn it between minus X, minus three, to positive three in the X axis. All right. And for the Z axis, we're gonna say from positive three to negative three. All right, so anywhere within this point, we want to spawn this object, okay? So now we need to go back to our game controller script. And here, as you can see, this is the spawn ball, and we need to find a way so that we can randomly spawn this ball. So here, inside the spawn ball function, what we can do is float random x, so this will be the random x spawn point, equals random dot range so at which range we want to spawn our value or spawn our ball so for that here we're going to create two new variables public float max x and public float max z so this will be the points which will which we will use to randomly spawn this so here we're going to write random range minus max x comma max x and for the second value we're going to write random z equals random dot range minus max z comma max z so now this will return us a random value between these two values okay and we're going to use that random value to spawn our ball so here we're going to simply copy this code and paste it here in here we're going to write vector 3 random spawn pose this is a new variable equals new vector 3 and for the x value we're going to write random x for the y value we're going to write 10f and for the z value we're going to write random z that we have already calculated so now what will happen is this will create a random spawn position and now inside the instantiate function instead of this we need to simply write random spawn pose all right so this way it is creating a random x position it is creating a random z position and this is creating a random vector 3 position which is taking the random x and z and finally we are instantiating our ball in this random spawn point and now as you can see in our start function we are repeatedly calling this spawn ball function so every time this gets called this function gets called and the ball will be instantiated at a random location over our plane so let's save this and go back to unity and see how it's working so now if I click on play you will see after some time a random ball is getting generated but the balls are as you can see all spawning at the same point and that's because we have not mentioned the maximum X and Z positions yet so let's go to game manager as you can see max X and max Z is empty so here I'm gonna write 3 and here I'm write 3 as well so now if I click on play now you will see all the balls are falling down at a random value over our plane and all of them are falling down. So this is how our random code is working. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you really enjoyed and learned a lot of new things. So go ahead and apply this in your own games. So if you want to learn more about C Sharp and Unity by building a lot of example games like 2D Endless Runner, 3D Endless Runner and all that kind of stuff, you can check out all my courses from the links in the description below. So you can go to the description, take the courses and learn a lot. So thanks so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe and I'm going to see you in the next videos.